Hey guys, I'm Alex with Sea Eagle Boats, and today I want to go over the assembly instructions for the SC330 and 370 sport kayaks. To start, we recommend setting up your kayak at home before your first outing. The first step is to unroll your boat in an area free of hazards and prepare it for inflation. Remove the sky protectors and put them back in the bag for later when you pack up the kayak. The items included will depend on what package you ordered, but all of our packages come with the hull, spray skirts, seats, paddles, carry bag, and repair kit. Your SC330 or SC370 has five valve openings. Three valve openings for the main chambers and one for each spray skirt. Begin by attaching the valve retainer ring to the valve base. This is a one-time assembly and the valves can be left on once they are in place. If you find it difficult to get the retainer ring over the base of the valve, we recommend warming it to make it more malleable. This can be done by heating the retainer ring with a hair dryer for 15 seconds or placing it in warm water from 15 to 30 seconds. Once you warm the retainer ring, it will be much easier to stretch over the base of the valve. Do this while the retainer ring is still warm. Take your time while doing this to avoid any breakage of the ring. Check the valve base for any dents or debris in the valve opening. Once you have the retainer ring in place, screw the valve body firmly into the base. Repeat this step for each location on your kayak. Next, unpack your foot pump. To remove the hose from around the foot pump, press both halves together to release the black clip. Insert the threaded end of the hose into the inflate port and screw it in tightly. This is a multi part adapter. The wide valve adapter is compatible with all the valves on your boat and seats. Take the wide valve adapter, insert it, and lock it into place at the end of the hose. The kayak is ready for inflation. You can start by inflating the floor. Insert the hose into the floor valve. Before and after inflation, confirm that the base of the valve is still on tight to avoid any air from leaking out. When the floor is firm to touch, remove the hose, screw the cap on tight, and proceed to the next chambers. Locate the inflation monitor, as it will be needed to inflate the side pontoons. The scale on the monitor measures 10 centimeters, or approximately 4 inches. When you feel resistance in the foot pump, check the pressure. Match the black gauge to the identical blue scale printed on the boat. The blue scale only goes up to the 9.5 in this case. That means we need to continue inflating. We're not quite done yet. When the scale monitor lines up with the scale printed on the hull, you know the pontoon is inflated to the recommended pressure. Lastly, inflate the spray skirt until filled. It takes a moment to fill the entire skirt with air. The end of the pump fits directly into the one way valve without using any additional accessories. The MB80 plugs into the accessory plug, once known as the cigarette lighter. Follow the same steps as before to confirm your boat is inflated. If the inflation monitor only reaches 9.5 centimeters, you can top it off with the foot pump. 
Remember to only use Sea Eagle recommended pumps as they have been tested thoroughly for use with Sea Eagle products. Never use an air compressor as it can easily damage your Sea Eagle and cause bodily harm. Non recommended pumps will void your Sea Eagle warranty. Next, you'll want to inflate your kayak seats. Inflate the seats using the same method you inflated the kayak. To assemble the deluxe kayak seats, first clip the straps to the base of the seats. Insert the valves into their openings, making sure that the valve is centered in the hole in the cover. Inflate with the pump just as you would the hull. If the valve does not align with the hole in the cover, we'll go over that in the troubleshooting section. Continue to inflate. Your seat's all ready to go. The straps can be loosened or tightened to offer optimal support while paddling. For solo paddling, place the seat just aft of the midpoint. If you're paddling with a partner, move the seat all the way back and place the other seat just forward of the midpoint. This will create the best balance for the boat. To assemble the paddles, find the left and right blade two connecting aluminum bars. You'll also need two drip guards. Install a drip guard on each aluminum paddle shaft. Put the drip guard on the end where there's only one hole. Insert the blades into the end of each shaft. Connect the two halves together and snap the push button into place. For beginners, we recommend the middle position. The additional off-center holes are for feathering the blade. This allows the blades to slice through the wind when paddling in a stiff breeze. We recommend rinsing the paddle with fresh water after each use to avoid salt buildup. Now the kayak is set up and we're ready to go over safety. On the side of your boat is a list of boating safety basics. Make sure to consult this before using your kayak for the first time. We highly recommend a boating safety course. Good resources to find these courses are the U.S. Coast Guard and the American Canoe Association. We'll drop links below. The sport kayak has two skegs and two side chines. This helps to paddle the kayak straighter and faster. If the skegs are bent, this can easily be fixed. We'll go over that in the troubleshooting section. Here are some tips to keep you feeling comfortable on the water. Be sure to always wear your life vest on the water. Not only does it keep you safe, it offers great storage for your essentials. For beginner kayakers, climbing in the kayak from the beach is going to be the easiest method. Not only does it allow you to stabilize the kayak, but with the kayak at waist level, you do not need to bend down to get in. Another method for getting in the kayak is to turn around and with both feet on the ground, drop your butt into the seat and swing your legs over. While paddling, keep your eyes up and focus on the horizon. Start off slowly and hold the paddle out in front of you. You may find that the kayak moves a bit side to side while paddling. This is normal. Keep your shoulders level and your back flexible to allow for movement. As the kayak picks up speed, it will maintain a true heading. If you paddle too hard at first, the boat will tend to yaw in the water. Now that we're all done paddling, the sports kayak has a drain in the rear of the kayak. This is to conveniently drain water out of the kayak should you happen to get water inside when you're paddling. To drain the kayak, unscrew the drain cap and lift the bow to drain any water that's accumulated inside. To preserve the condition of your sports kayak, a quick rinse down is always helpful. Dry off your boat and the accessories before stowing them away. An easy way to do this is to plate the floor and use a towel. To deflate the kayak, unscrew each of the valves in any order you prefer.
Fold the sides of the boat onto the floor and align the spray skirts over the center. Start by folding your boat from the bow towards the stern, where the valve openings are located. This will help push air out as you fold it up. Finally, attach the skate protectors and place the kayak and accessories into the carry bag for storage. Now let's go over some basic care for your kayak. If you are using the kayak in sunny locations like South Florida, where I am, you may want to apply 303 aerospace protectant to protect your kayak from ultraviolet light. To apply your 303 protectant, we recommend doing it while your kayak is inflated, as it makes it much easier to cover all the surfaces. If you feel that your kayak is not tracking properly, there's a few things you can do. For the best performance on the sport kayak, you want to ensure that it is properly balanced. Proper weight distribution is important when it comes to kayaking. This can vary depending on the weight and height of the person paddling or how much gear you have with you. If you still feel like the kayak is not tracking properly, inspect the skegs on the bottom of the kayak to make sure they are straight. If they seem bent, use a hairdryer to warm them up and bend them back to straight position. Do this with the kayak deflated and allow time for it to cool before reinflating. Put the skeg protectors on before stowing away the kayak. Check the valve to make sure they are not misthreaded and are sealed. If your kayak is still losing air, it may be something to do with the valve. Inspect the valve and the valve base to confirm both are free from debris, dents, and other issues. Check the bottom of the valve to confirm that the black rubber flap and gasket are present and in good shape. If you do see debris on the valve, clear it away so it does not affect the seal when tightening down your valve. If you see a dent on the valve base, this can be removed using a hairdryer to warm the area and remove the dent. Inflate the kayak or seat and with the valve tightened down and in place, you can listen for air leaking. Wiggle the valve and confirm it is tightened down properly. If it feels loose, you may need to tighten it further. A towel can help you get better grip doing this. If you find a leak that's not coming from the valve, please see our repair video for more details. When rolling up the kayak, clear the valve bases. If a valve body is being pressed onto the base, move it aside so it does not cause a dent as discussed before. This will avoid any issues next time you head out on the water. The spray skirt may need to be adjusted, and this can be done by lining up the spray skirt with the point of the boat. You may have to slightly adjust the rope. On the DKS seat, if a valve does not align with the access hole on the cover, unzip the bottom of the cover and use your hand to adjust the bladder so the valve is properly centered in the hole. You are now ready to enjoy years of kayaking on your new Sea Eagle Sport Kayak. If this video is informative and helped you with your new kayak, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and comment below if you have any more questions. Mm -hmm.